Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Gail Robos. I'm a professor of medicine and director of the leukemia program at Weill Cornell Medicine and the New York Presbyterian Hospital in New York City. I am live at the ASH meeting, ASH 2023 in San Diego, and it's my pleasure to talk about some interesting things that are happening in AML. Um, in a symposium yesterday, we actually had an opportunity to discuss um, AML maintenance, which is a topic that I think is um, extremely hot at the moment and very intertwined, as I discussed in my lecture, with also a hot topic of something called MRD or measurable residual disease. So in AML, we know that we can get a lot of patients into remission these days. But we don't really know how to keep a lot of them in remission. There are certain patients who go on to stem cell transplantation, but the concept of maintenance, both after initial therapy and after stem cell transplantation, is something that is very, very prominent in the minds of AML physicians because these patients have such a high chance of relapse. So we know that there is an FDA approved agent, oral azacitidine for maintenance, which uh, was approved based on something called the Quasar trial, which was a randomized trial in which patients older than 55 who were not able to go on to stem cell transplantation got whatever consolidation chemotherapy was planned by their physician and then were randomized to either get oral azacitidine or not. And that study actually showed an overall survival benefit for maintenance and oral azacitidine has been approved. But what else can we do? What else is out there? So we want to understand what exactly maintenance is doing. Is maintenance getting rid of residual disease? Well, we know a little bit about this because for example, in the Quasar trial, there were patients who were MRD positive by flow cytometry who then became MRD negative while on maintenance therapy. And the MRD positive patients actually had benefits both in relapse-free survival and in overall survival. So this leads then to the upcoming questions and some of which are being discussed at the ASH meeting of what patients, which patients with AML should get what type of maintenance and what is the goal of maintenance? Might we be able to actually eradicate some residual disease and cure the patient or do patients have to be on maintenance forever? And these are questions that we don't know the answers to. But I presented some data which are emerging, for example, on the uh, specific subtypes of um, AML um, that are biologically defined, NPM1 mutated patients, FLT3 patients, where we know a little bit about um, high sensitivity MRD measurements in the remission setting. For example, for post-transplant patients getting gilteritinib, which was investigated in the MORPHO trial, those patients actually, they didn't meet the primary endpoint, so there wasn't an overall survival benefit for gilteritinib. However, in patients who were MRD positive, as measured by a, a now approved NGS-PCR-based very sensitive assay, those are the, the patients who benefited from gilteritinib. So there is now an emerging question, which is getting a lot of discussion that should we be doing this type of testing for FLT3 patients, and when they have detectable disease by this assay, use a drug like gilteritinib, and then either keep them on it or after a fixed period of time that we don't know yet, perhaps stop the agent if they are MRD negative. This question comes up also for patients with an NPM1 mutation. So NPM1 mutation um, is, uh, is a biological subtype that we usually follow in the post-remission setting with PCR measurements of um, NPM1. And there are some recently published data suggesting, for example, that venetoclax-based regimens might be able to restore MRD-positive patients to MRD-negative. We also know that oral azacitidine was shown to be of benefit, regardless of whether the patients had NPM1 or FLT3 mutations. So there's a lot of unanswered questions um, for AML doctors, but some of them do have answers. So we know that for patients who aren't going on to a stem cell transplant, we know that probably they have a very high chance of, um, of relapse, and we are certainly thinking of oral azacitidine maintenance for patients who had intensive chemotherapy, and we are thinking of FLT3 inhibitors and also venetoclax-based regimens to be applied as MRD erasers, if you will, in, the, in patients who have residual disease after their initial therapy. 
we need more randomized trials. We need clinical data to come through on this and you should enroll your patients onto trials. But this is a very active space and I suspect we'll get more so as the menin inhibitors, which are coming along both for KMT2A rearranged and for NPM1 mutated subtypes, might we have another agent that is going to become available hopefully for those patients that will probably be investigated also in the uh, post remission and maintenance state. So overall, Again, some difficult questions, some answers, definitely worth looking for a clinical trial, definitely worth a discussion on an individual patient who is doing well in remission on maintenance, whether or not you would consider stopping the agent. I don't think we're ready for that yet, but I do think that high sensitivity MRD testing is going to become the norm in AML, especially in biologically uh, defined subsets such as NPM1 and FLT3 are going to sort of pave the way for the rest. And don't forget to check your uh, transcript levels also in the post remission setting for patients with core binding factor AML, because there too, those are patients in whom rising transcripts almost invariably lead to overt disease. So that can be a scenario in which a, um, an MRD-directed intervention can at least be considered. Thank you for listening.